Good afternoon, everyone. It is two o'clock, so I will begin to get started with the uh, quarterly market review for Q3. Uh, my name is Ryan Strong. I'm the customer service manager um, on CPMS, and I'll be presenting uh, both Canada and the US market review today. Uh, we're gonna start with Canada. Um, we're gonna follow the same format as usual. Um, and as always, uh, we'll take questions at the end. And if you have any feedback or um, ideas for the next QMR, uh, please let me know. So the format, like I mentioned, as always, we'll start with market performance, uh, then best sectors and stocks, uh, single factor analysis and model performance. And then lastly, we'll look at market fundamentals and outlook. So in Q3, uh, looking at price change only, um, the TSX was about up about just over 7% um, in July and August, and then took a little dip uh, in September, ending the uh, quarter up 4.5%. Um, from a total return perspective, the TSX comp was up 4.73% for Q3, um, and, but small caps actually led the way up 6.64% for the quarter. Yeah. Next, looking at market breadth, um, the way uh, we calculate this is just looking at any stock in the index that was positive um, contributes to the market breadth for the, for the index. Uh, so 65% market breadth for the TSX comp, um, 68 for the TSX 60, and 63% for TSX small cap. Yeah. Looking at the, the return and breadth uh, for the individual uh, GIC sectors, um, these returns were very broad based um, with just energy and healthcare uh, not participating. Um, energy having a, a tough quarter um, and then uh, healthcare was mostly dragged down by the marijuana stocks. As you can see there, uh, Aurora Cannabis down 63%. Um, and then uh, Trillium Therapeutics actually being the, the number one performer within the TSX comp of 72%. We're gonna dive uh, into Trillium a, a little bit um, as well. And just another visualization here showing the, uh, the sector returns, um, industrials leading the way, um, had a great quarter and utilities not far behind and then energy and healthcare uh, were, were the biggest uh, laggards. So Trillium Therapeutics, 72% um, uh, return for the quarter. Um, if you're not familiar with the stock, uh, it is an immuno-oncology company. Um, they're developing innovative therapies for treatments of cancer. Um, I believe they are still uh, in, in phase one of their clinical trials. So it is early on. Um, and um, looking at you know, how our CPMS pre-built models look at this company, um, because the returns that we saw for Q3 were largely a result of progress in their clinical trials, but not um, something that a rules-based system would pick up like fundamentals or, or earning surprises. Um, this is uh, still a, a very speculative stock at this point um, and isn't being picked up by uh, the majority or all of our models, aside from dangerous, um, which is our inverse or short model. Um, if you dive in a little bit deeper into some of our most popular models like dividend growth, um, it is a sell uh, pretty much across the board. Trillium doesn't pay a dividend. Um, they're not growing uh, earnings or their, or their cash flow. Um, they are uh, still very speculative at this point. So best uh, performers over the, uh, over the quarter. Um, this was largely uh, materials, which uh, was one of the best performing um, sectors in Q3. Uh, but there's also a theme within here and um, it's, uh, it's uh, the renewable energy um, space. So the number one uh, materials company, Lithium Americas make, uh, is mining lithium uh, for, uh, which is a large part in, in um, developing electric batteries for, uh, for electric cars as well as uh, over in consumer staples, uh, Sun Opta, which is a, a solar company, um, and then even down to uh, utilities, Brookfield Renewables. Um, so this is a theme that uh, we've seen for a while, but was definitely um, highlighted again in, in Q3. Worst performing stocks, 
um, no surprise, a large amount of energy companies here, as well as over in healthcare, uh, you know, some of the, the big uh, cannabis names um, continuing to, uh, to underperform. So th this slide I found uh, very interesting for Q3. Um, so here we're looking at the best 50 stocks as of June 30th, uh, what their characteristics were like, and then um, what their characteristics were like at the end of the quarter on September 30th. And um, the, 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 this basket of 50 stocks, they tended to have estimate revisions that were cut um, drastically uh, by the analysts. However, by the end of the quarter, um, this was actually the, the opposite. So analysts were a little bit too bearish on these companies and these companies ended up um, surprising to the upside and they, um, they, they seem to turn things around or, or maybe the analysts were just a, a little bit too bearish. Uh, but in contrast, the um, worst performing 50 stocks, you know, the analysts uh, definitely still um, revised downwards on these, on these stocks. However, they were not able to surprise. So the worst 50 stocks, um, they tended to, uh, they still have negative estimate revisions. Um, they haven't uh, turned things around from uh, earning su surprise perspective or, and they've continued to cut cash flows um, as well. Uh, so good news, 78% uh, of the time you would have experienced a positive return back to 1957. Um, and uh, typically IT leads the way. Um, however, uh, it's interesting to note that financials isn't far behind and uh, you have uh, a, a better risk adjusted return um, looking at the financial sector in Q4. So what fundamentals did the market reward in Q3? So at the start of each period, we equally weight the best 50 stocks using some of the most commonly used CPMS factors. And then we, um, we have our single factor analysis. So the market um, tended to look uh, at expected growth and growth-like characteristics um, and rewarded those companies. So expected growth for next year uh, which had the best which standalone return at 14.7%. Um, and then looking um, at some of the worst returns, uh, the market was not rewarding uh, trailing PE, was not rewarding trailing price to cash flow. Um, so growth uh, is still definitely in, in favor um, within Canada as well. Uh, so this, uh, <clears throat> this brings us to our model portfolios. Uh, and you can see how um, the previous um, factors impact the returns in our model portfolios. So the number one uh, um, model portfolio was triple 10, which is income, predictable growth, and momentum, which had over a double, per, uh, double um, a return over the benchmark at 10.2%. PSX comp uh, at 4.73. And then uh, towards the bottom, um, posting negative returns for the quarter, uh, bargain and uh, earnings value. So next we're just looking at uh, market fundamentals and outlook. Um, so here you're looking at the reported ROE and this is net of T-bills. Um, so we're seeing this at a 20 year low, however, uh, it's projected to rebound um, significantly in 2021. And you can see that dotted blue line illustrating um, 2021. And then uh, the median price to book ratio remains modest. So bounced uh, off 0.9 up to 1.5, which tends to be the, uh, the around the median over the last uh, um, 25, 30 years. So Reported earnings continue to decline um, in Q3, however, have definitely bounced off the, uh, the Q2 lows. Um, next, just looking at year-over-year -year earnings growth of the TSX composite, uh, still um, trending downwards from the year-over-year -year, uh, earnings perspective. Beats and misses in the TSX composite, 68% of companies within the TSX composite beat their earnings, 32% missed. Um, no surprise, IT uh, uh, with a 90% uh, beat um, 
which has been a significant theme over the last uh, few quarters and even few years. Estimate revisions and earning surprises. So uh, this is a, a, a constant theme that we're seeing where analysts were a little bit too pessimistic in Q2, um, slashed earnings, you know, over uh, earnings estimates over 35%. Um, and now into Q3, that's uh, bounced all the way back and actually um, into positive territory. So expected EPS growth, um, bit of a mixed bag across sectors. However, earning surprises, uh, earning surprises positive across all sectors. So once again, analysts just being a, a little bit too bearish there in every sector able to um, post a positive earning surprise. Other considerations. Um, so the dividend yield on the TSX composite still greater than the 10 year bond yield. The gap has decreased a little bit from 2.82 to 2.66. And uh, unemployment um, has bounced back in Q3 uh, and inflation still remains extremely low. Technical analysis. So back in, uh, in March, the TSX plunged through the 200 day moving average. Um, it has a V-shaped recovery, you could say, um, back above the 200-day. Uh, it still remains um, under the 50-day moving average, so almost in neutral territory here. Um, something to monitor um, if uh, the TSX can hold the 200-day moving average. So just uh, to summarize the Canadian um, market over Q3, price to book kind of mid-range, um, reported ROE near 20 year lows, but definitely projected to rebound in 2021. Uh, reporting earnings continue to decline in Q3, but have bounced off Q2 lows. Dividend yields still well above the 10 year bond yield, um, but that gap has decreased slightly. Unemployment bouncing back in Q3. And from a technical perspective, we're kind of in the neutral territory there. Uh, 